am Katie Van Geem. I'm a watershed coordinator at the Clean Lakes Alliance. Uh, and we're going to talk today about citizen water quality monitoring on the lakes here in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Justin Shannonbert. I'm a, a watershed engagement intern and I'll be sampling the lake today for uh, clarity and water temperature. So Clean Lakes Alliance is a nonprofit organization that was created in 2010. Our vision is to make the lakes the center of our community, getting people engaged with the lakes, using the lakes, interacting with Lakeshore Parks, and uh, our mission is to continue working with organizations and groups that are working on improving water quality within the Yohar River watershed. Let's go to the lake and sample. Okay, so we just took some basic measurements of water, water clarity and temperature. Um, we took air temperature first and then uh, wading out into thigh deep water, we recorded water temperature um, by sticking the thermometer a few inches into the water column and letting the temperature equilibrate for a while. Um, we got an air temperature of 61.2 degrees Fahrenheit and a water temperature of 59.0 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we also took a water clarity measurement with the turbidity tube. So that involved um, taking the tube 120 centimeters, um, submerging it in the water um, so the open end is six inches below the surface, um, letting all the air out, and then we bring that back to the shore. Um, you look through the tube down at the black and white cross uh, pattern at the bottom, that's like a secchi disc, um, shading the tube with your body. Um, you let air, I mean you let water out of the tube until you can just barely see that black and white pattern. And at that point um, you record the, um, the height of the column of water which gives you an idea of how much water you can look through to see that pattern. So if that's a lot of water then there's not a lot of things floating in the water, algae, sediment particles, anything like that. Whereas if it's a just a few centimeters and you know the water is very turbid and cloudy and we generally consider that to be less um, lower quality water um, for any reason why you know you might have algae sediment getting tossed up um, runoff going into the lakes and then we also take um, a bunch of visual observations we look at if there's waterfowl algae um, floating on the surface bathers in the water um, floating plant debris um, and if there's algae we try to identify what type of bloom it is Blue-green algal blooms are um, a water quality hazard for um, bathers and anybody who might, um, pets who might ingest the water. Um, some species of blue-green algae produce toxins which um, can affect your liver or your, uh, your brain. So um, we try to identify where those blooms are and the whole idea of this water quality monitoring is to get an idea of, um, to kind of gather data um, about where these blooms are appearing, what's the water quality like and the temperature like where these blooms are appearing. And we're, um, Green Lakes Alliance is partnering with some researchers at UW-Madison who are interested in predicting um, what conditions encourage the formation of these blooms and what, um, what the summer season will look like in terms of how many blooms we're going to have based on this kind of data.